what a great gift, what a joy it is for us to be together once again on this side of life as we are in a new year in 2021 and God has allowed us to be here today to experience a day that we have never seen before. And so we pray that you have been blessed even in these early stages of the year and we're just going to prophesy over your life we're going to prophesy greater a greater blessing uh, a greater hope uh, a greater anointing just a greater year and so we know that through the help of God through the auspices of his word and his church uh, through the communion and the fellowship of brothers and sisters such a proclamation is possible. This morning we are going to continue our series as we have been looking at the evangelistic Jesus. And this morning Jesus is going to teach us something about worship. So we will entreat you to get your Bibles and we are going to pick up where we left off at our last message as we were in Luke chapter 2. And so we are going to uh, center our sermonic exercise today in Luke chapter 2. And we will give you a little forewarning that this morning we are going to have a few more points than we are usually prone to have. I think by the time we are done, we'll be somewhere at about seven points. Uh, but we promise not to make those points too long or to belabor them too much, but we'll encourage you to get your paper and your pencil and write them down as we go along. Jesus is going to aid us and evangelize uh, to us through the means of worship. So at our last sermon, we talked about evangelism as the spreading of the Christian gospel, but more perfectly, we talked about God as an evangelist and God being the one that is primarily responsible for uh, spreading the message. And the thing that we would like to encourage you to do is allow yourself to be a conduit. Allow yourself uh, to be a vessel through which God can uh, connect, a vessel through which God can use. He can pour into and then in turn pour you out so that you are instrumental in receiving the message but also proclaiming the message. And so we will look at this message as we have learned and, and, and look to see how we can glean in this message from God's Christ. And so in order to do that, we will hasten back to Luke chapter 1, uh, chapter 2. And in Luke chapter 2, at about verse number 39, uh, we left off where the scripture was telling us about Simeon, as Simeon has encountered Mary and Joseph and their young child, Jesus. And Simeon has blessed Jesus. Simeon has blessed Mary. Simeon has blessed Joseph. And then the Bible says in verse number 39, and when they had performed all of these things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child, meaning Jesus, he grew and he waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, when his parents, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and the first point that we are going to make from uh, 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 verse number 41 is that worship should be led by parents. Worship should be led by parents. Uh, the scripture here is King 
need to point this out to us, that this action of worship is something that's spearheaded by the parents of Jesus. And as we talk about worship uh, in the Greek, uh, this term appears as proskuneo. It, it means uh, one that prostrates themselves before God. So uh, it gives this idea of laying down. And so for us, we can see this being executed, and, and, and we should execute this in our lives, that, that we should prepare ourselves for worship. But uh, 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 the thing that starts out here is that the focus is on the parents, that the parents of Jesus is going to lead him, and they're going to lead the family. They're going to lead to Jerusalem. And uh, but not only uh, do they, they lead, or is it the parents that's leading, it is the parents that are, that are leading as they go to Jerusalem. It's, it's our second point, is that not only should worship be, be led by the parents, but worship takes dedication. Why, why, why would we say there's a dedication element that is involved? Well, we know that Jesus was from Nazareth. So it was the place where his parents lived. So uh, they had to go from Nazareth all the way to Jerusalem. And for them, uh, Nazareth was 65 miles from Jerusalem. So in order for them to get to Jerusalem, they had to walk. So, so they had to be dedicated in getting to worship. Now, that's significant for us today because many of us, especially since we're in a pandemic, you don't even have to go to the church. All you have to do is get out of your bed. I'm going to suggest I know some of you don't even get out of your bed. Amen. All you have to do is cut on the television or cut on the computer. And some of us are not even dedicated enough to do that. And so what we see with these people is they didn't have the car. They didn't have the train, they didn't have the airplane, and yet they are dedicated enough to make it to this assembly called worship in Jerusalem. And the calculation of, of the best scholars is this was a four days journey, and yet and still, they're dedicated to take this journey. Verse 41 goes on to say that his parents, they go to Jerusalem, and they go every year. Here's our third point, that worship requires consistency. Worship requires consistency. Not just, just that, well, I went, yeah, I, I, I led my children, I took them to church here and there. Worship is a present action 
commemorating and celebrating the past, but it is also anticipatory of what God is going to do in the future. And we see these people that are dedicated to God for what he has done and still showing themselves to be faithful in verse number 42 in Luke. Luke goes on to say, and when he, meaning Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Here's our fifth point. You're never too young to worship. Amen. And I, I, I can add a caveat to that. You're never too old to worship. That worship is for everybody. And serving God is for everybody. Humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God is for everybody. And so I, I, I appreciate the fact that Mary and Joseph go and they go to praise God, they go to worship God, or they go to celebrate God, and they don't leave their children at home. Amen. There's a word there for somebody. That part of their instruction is their religious and their spiritual instruction. And so they take Jesus to this point of worship. Verse 43 says, And when they had fulfilled the days, as they turned, the child tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew it not. Here's point number six. Worship should be engaging. Worship should be engaging. And if I could say that in another way, I'd say it this way. You should get wrapped up in worship. And yeah, so, so here's the idea is that, that Mary and Joseph take Jesus to worship, but before it's all over, Jesus doesn't even want to leave. Jesus is happy to be in, in, in the presence of God. That Jesus is happy to be in uh, the company of the people of God. So much so, he's fully engaged to the point that his family members and his relations go away and thereby he does not follow. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 44, uh, Luke goes on to say, They left, they supposing him to have been in their company, went a day's journey. They, they've been gone for a day. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and their acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Sitting in the midst of the doctors, it makes us wonder, where were they looking for him? He's sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why have you dealt with us in this manner? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you, and, and as we've been looking for you, we have been sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Where were you looking for me? And did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Doctrine point number seven. Worship is about the Father. It's always about Him. It's not really about us. And Jesus is 
saying, you know what, my focus was on the Father. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all of these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. It's a nice little snapshot that we get from this family that assembles themselves at a point of worship. It's something that comes to us as an evangelistic tool that Jesus and, and this family, as it were, demonstrates to us the necessity of us gathering together at the feet of God and gathering together for the purpose of worship. What should we do? A symbol. Worship. Assemble ourselves for worship. To prostrate ourselves before the God of heaven. To be in communion and to be in fellowship. To ask questions. To ask questions of God. And to seek answers. To be so enthralled. To be so engaged. To be wrapped up to the point that we lose ourselves as we bask in the presence and in the glory of God. Yeah, we would like to cast your imagination upon the God of heaven that is able to secure our hearts and our minds in every situation of life. God bless you.